Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com where we do free video tutorials on lots of different machines. And here we are just getting started with the Husqvarna Viking Brilliant 75Q. And I'm going to show you all the things that need to go right to get your machine correctly threaded and a bobbin wound. So follow along, but we are doing a short video on every page of your manual. Whether you've bought this machine or you're looking to purchase this machine, this is a great place to explore all the options. There's a lot of fun features I can't wait to show you. And we will have a playlist in the description below where you can start from the beginning and kind of binge watch and learn everything you need to know about this machine. There's lots of things that it does. I love that being just a soy machine, how many features are on the top of the line soy machines, but without the top of the line price? It's also not as big. So for those of you with limited space and you just want a nice running machine, this really is a sweet machine. So we're going to take a bobbin out. I'm going to show you a few things about it. One of the big things though is people always ask me is like, how do I know which thread spool to put the thread on. So here's just a quick little understanding. First off, if your thread is cross wound thread, so meaning you're kind of looking at your spool and it has kind of some X's on it, this means that you want to place it on the horizontal spool pin. And then with that, you are going to need a spool cap. Now let me talk about spool caps. If you just put it on a little bit, that gap can later trap this thread and get it caught, which will usually mean the needle breaks and because it gets kind of caught on here. So make sure that if you are using it laid down, push that cap all the way up against it, no gap between there at all. Next, as you come across, you are going to come over the top of the silver um, guide here. And as you notice, that guide is positioned to perfectly pull the thread all the way off without any resistance across that entire spool. If you're using a spool with more of a stacked thread, usually like a dual duty has that where all the threads are next to each other stacked up, it's best to use the vertical spool pin and then that spool spins and that is the best way to use a spool like that. So for winding a bobbin, which we'll do first, take out a bobbin, you'll notice there is a Husqvarna H for their logo on top. That means you're always going to have the logo on top when you wind a bobbin and also when you put it in the machine. So that means you never do it incorrect. The key to winding a good bobbin is to make sure you come underneath with the thread underneath and pull it into that pretensioner. Do you hear that little click? If it just lays around there, that's when you get like bobbins that are kind of fluffy. That doesn't work so, so well and they don't look as nice and you're kind of like, ah, should I use it? Probably not. Just rewind that bobbin onto another bobbin so you don't waste the thread and come back and make sure that you hold and click it into the pretensioner. Next, we're coming over to the guide right behind this screen corner and lay it in there. And here's what you're gonna do. Take the thread, snip the end, and you're gonna thread it from the inside out of the bobbin through that little hole. And when you do that, that means the tail comes up through the top of the bobbin. And when you place the bobbin, I'm still making sure my H is on top. When I push that all the way down, give it a little spin until it clicks, then I can hold on to this thread while it starts to wind. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this over towards the stopper. When I do that, notice what happens on screen. It comes up with a bobbin winding screen that only appears when the bobbin's engaged. So you can do a couple things. You can do it at full speed, most people do. Sometimes people will drop this down to like half speed and then go ahead and touch the play or go button right here on screen. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick and this will come up later when we're doing a, and talking about bobbin sensors. So the bobbin sensor, it'll tell you when you're low, but what it does is it fills the bobbin at the top first and then leaves a lot of thread in there. When the sensor comes up, it's like, but wait, there looks like there's a lot of thread. So I have been known to, when I start this, is to bump the thread after a few winds down lower to the lower deck, let it fill down there. And so there's only like, when I'm done, there's only like a, oh, about a, a foot or 12 inches worth of thread in the top. So I know when I get that sensor, say my bobbin's almost out, I am almost out. I could sew probably just a little bit more and then I'll be having to change it. So if you wanna see that trick right now, I'm holding the thread, I'm starting my bobbin winder, and then I just jump or pop with my fingers the thread to the lower part. 
At this point, I'm still holding onto this thread. I like to stop, cut, and then trim really close to the end. Use small scissors so there's no little tail sticking up. That can interfere when you are sewing because your thread, when the stitch is made, actually comes over the top of your bobbin. So if there's a little thing sticking up there, it's gonna come across that every stitch and things might not be as smooth. So make sure that you kind of um, cut that off, nothing is sticking up, and then go ahead and wind a full bobbin. For any reason that this doesn't fill to your liking, maybe it stops a little sooner, this little stopper right here can actually be adjusted. And once you have it adjusted to where it will stop at the right amount, uh, most of the time it's okay, but if you want a little bit more, a little less, for any reason it's overfilling, you have control to uh, kind of adjust that perfectly. That is nothing that we really change. See how it's stopping? It's gotten getting slower. I can come here, turn it off. Um, I do like how full it has gotten, so I don't know I don't need to do anything. But for any reason, like we don't test how full a bobbin winds when we send a machine home. So that, that you have to kind of just know, do it and see how it comes out. All right, I'm gonna slide this bobbin back. There is a cutter right here that you can lift up, pull towards you around that cutter, and it'll cut the thread. The other thing is the way I'm holding it is exactly the way it needs to go into the machine. So if you just come right down here, we're gonna slide this door towards us, reach in, flip that bobbin out, and I'm gonna show you how the bobbin goes in next. There is a proper way to correctly put a bobbin in. There is a tension area that the thread must be um, laid in, clicked in, and followed around. So with that H on top, that does mean that your thread is coming off the left-hand side, so drop it in. That bobbin should be spinning counterclockwise, as you can see. And then come on over all the way to the side. So right about 5.30, there's a little groove right here. Now, if you can't get it to come around, you can always take the thread over the top and then it will drag itself right into that groove super easy so whichever way you want to go but next what I like to tell my students is hold on to the thread end with your left hand put and put pressure on the bobbin with your right hand and listen did you hear that click between about 5 30 and 7 there's a tension area the thread must click in there and stay in there at this point, you can come around the upper part and there's a little arrow down here indicating there's a cutter. And when you bring your thread around, you can cut the thread. Sometimes what I like to do is actually put the door on and cover it, then cut. So whatever you like to do, but I just wanna pull so you can see. So sometimes the thread will kind of stay where it is. Sometimes it will snap away, but I do like to go ahead and get that contained. That thread is just long enough that you don't have to pull that bobbin thread up when we start to stitch. And that's why we love that little extra tail of thread. Now, since I'm right here, let me show you something cool. Did you notice there's a circle on that bobbin case door? That is actually a magnifying glass. Haha, <laughs> did you know that? So if you have trouble seeing something, you have a magnifying glass right at your fingertips. And since I did that and my thread kind of moved around, I'm going to just kind of show you if I lay that in there, put the door on, push it closed, then pull the thread, Perfect, it stays where it wants to be. Now, just so you know, there is another way to wind a bobbin. Once the machine is threaded through the needle, under the foot, you can come and drag the thread right across these two silver arms and over to the bobbin winder and then set it to stitch or to wind. And then you don't even have to unthread the machine to wind a new bobbin. The key is you have to make sure that the presser foot is not down. Down means the tension discs have closed and it puts way too much pressure and drag for that bobbin. And so that's the only thing you have to be careful about. Okay, so for threading the machine, we do use that first guide, but we do not use the bobbin pretensioner. So we're gonna skip this all together and I'm coming around and following across to the back. At this time, it is best to get in a good habit of actually threading your machine with your left hand. I'm gonna end up coming down and underneath and back up in just a second. But right through here is the tension discs. Now if you get your thread all the way deep inside those discs and the foot goes down and you start to sew and it's you will have a perfect stitch. But sometimes people don't get it far enough down 
And then when you start to sew, have you ever seen those threads on the back of your fabric? And they're kind of like a nest or a ball of thread and you always are like, oh, why did my machine do that? Well, it was actually because you didn't thread it correctly. So this is a way to make sure you don't have that issue 100% of the time. Take your thread, hold it at the top, and then as you thread, you're gonna come down with purpose and come up and right here, if you stop and just floss, it will make sure that that thread goes down as far as it'll go. At this point, you can come back. We're coming in on the right of the take-up lever and down on the left, and we'll hook right into the piece that you see. If you do not see the take-up lever right here, you will just need to touch your needle down and then touch your needle up, and it will bring it up to the highest position where it will be the most easiest place to thread. At this point, there is one guide at the top of the needle, and then I'm gonna show you the needle threader. The guide at the top of the needle is open on the left side, so just take your thread and hook it around and bring it straight down, so that thread becomes very close to the needle. Now here, you're gonna notice your thread is very easy to pull. If you touch the foot down button right here, you will have thread tension, and it makes it really easy to use the needle threader next. Now a needle threader, will work as you bring it down there's a little hook that's going to come from the back of the needle take the thread and then pull it through so the way we do this is as we come halfway down i like to swing the thread around the needle threader bring the needle threader all the way down all the way down and all the way down again make sure that comes all the way as far as possible Take the thread, lay it in the little groove, lift up gently, and then as I let go of the needle threader, I'm also letting go of the thread. I can't hold onto that thread, otherwise it can't pull it through. See that little loop in the back? That's what it pulls through, and then you do the rest by pulling that right on in. So here's it is one more time. Halfway down, needle threader, swish it around. Needle threader all the way down in the second step then put the thread in there, Don't not before. Lift up just a little bit and then let it pull it out of your fingers so a loop can come through the back of the needle. At this point, bring your presser foot back up, find the little groove right next to the A of the foot and slide it to the back. When I go to test out stitches, I always take my fabric and fold it in half. That gives me a good look of the stitch. Remember, we don't have to bring that bobbin thread up, so all I'm gonna do is step on my foot control. You're gonna see the foot will naturally go down to the fabric, start with some locking stitches, and then start sewing. Here is where we can use the thread cutter. It will cut the thread and lift the foot up all at once, so I love that feature. And when I pull it out, I'll just have one thread. It's because the thread is cut and the bobbin thread is waiting for the next seam. Once you take a look at your stitches, front and back, and they look identical, you know you have threaded the machine correctly. I hope you'll check out the rest of the videos. We'll have links to the whole playlist here at the end. There's a link in the description where you can find all these videos hanging out and you can binge watch them from the beginning to master the Husqvarna Viking Brilliant 75Q from A to Z.